Hey, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now in the US, there's a debate about increasing the minimum wage, and there's a lot of confusion and misinformation. This video is about clarifying people's misunderstandings. Just the facts based on independent studies and the research. Stop! Seriously! It's time for the top nine misconceptions about minimum wage. Okay, misconception number one. Most hourly workers earn minimum wage. Nope. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only 4.3% of hourly workers earn the federal minimum wage, and that percent has been falling for some time. Back in 1979, it was 13%, but around 30% of workers are near the minimum wage, so an increase can affect a lot of people. Misconception number two, the people earning minimum wage are minorities living in poverty. The government agency that keeps track of all that stuff reports that 77% of minimum wage earners are white and half of them are between the age 16 and 24. Also, many are working part-time. Misconception number three, all U.S. states have the same minimum wage. It is true that all states are required to comply with the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, but the majority have enacted higher state minimum wages, and some individual cities like Seattle, San Francisco, and L.A. have established even higher minimum wages. On the other end, there's three states that have a state minimum wage that's less than the federal minimum wage, and five states that have no minimum wage at all. Misconception number four, the minimum wage has been going up over time. Well, it is true the federal minimum wage has increased. For example, in 2007, laws were passed to increase it from 5.15 per hour to 7.25 per hour. But when you adjust for inflation, the federal minimum wage hasn't changed very much at all. In fact, it peaked in 1968 when it was well over $10 in today's prices. Also, the U.S. has one of the lowest minimum wages compared to other developed countries. Misconception number five, the vast majority of economists disagree with increasing the minimum wage. There's a bunch of things that economists agree on, but minimum wage is not one of them. Surveys of economists show they're split about 50-50 on the subject. Some love minimum wage and some hate it. Misconception number six, People that are against minimum wage don't care about the poor. Well, it's probably true in some cases, but it's disingenuous to suggest that the fight over minimum wage is just class warfare with the rich and powerful trying to keep wages down. One of the most compelling arguments against the minimum wage is that it actually hurts the people it claims to help unskilled minorities. Forcing employers to pay workers more prevents them from taking a chance in hiring unskilled workers that desperately need experience and skills. The end result is that these workers don't earn minimum wage, they make no wage, and they learn no skills. And there's empirical evidence that this keeps some people in poverty and reduces lifetime earnings. Misconception number seven, increasing the minimum wage causes massive unemployment. Traditional economic theory that you'd see in a textbook suggests that minimum wage does cause unemployment. I made a video about it, check it out. But several studies in the last few decades have shown that the impact on jobs in real life is not as bad as traditional theory suggests. Some argue that this is because the demand for workers is inelastic and the employers really need them so they're willing to pay a higher wage. Or it could be that it takes more time for employers to find alternatives. But either way, the increases we've seen in minimum wage have not caused massive unemployment. Misconception number eight, increasing the minimum wage has no effect on jobs. In 2014, 600 economists sent a letter to the president supporting an increase in the federal minimum wage to $10.10 .10 an hour by 2016. It included this statement. The weight of evidence now shows that increases in the minimum wage have little or no effect on the employment of minimum wage workers. Some people have taken this at face value and pushed for a higher and higher minimum wage, if not $10 and why not 15 or 20. It is true that the gradual increases we've seen in minimum wage have not caused a lot of unemployment, but that's because they're still relatively low. The federal minimum wage in the U.S. is around 38% of median income, and evidence suggests that we're okay as long as it stays under 50%. Countries that have gone higher than that, like France, tend to have a whole lot more unemployment. So is $10 too high, or how about 15? Well, no one really knows for sure, and if they say they do, they're lying. And finally, misconception number nine, increasing the minimum wage can solve our problems with poverty and income inequality. Well, one of my favorite sayings in economics is there are no solutions, only trade-offs. The Congressional Budget Office reported that an increase of minimum wage to $10.10 .10 an hour could get up to 900,000 people out of poverty but it will likely cost 500,000 jobs. In other words, raising the minimum wage can help us reduce poverty, but on its own, it's not gonna solve it. It's exciting to debate minimum wage, but it's also important to focus on other factors like providing education and making sure people have the skills they need to get a job. But that too has a cost. So the question is, is it worth it? Well, tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, until next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to learn more economic concepts, click right here. If you want to learn economics by analyzing movies, click right here. 
Make sure to subscribe and tell me what you think about minimum wage in the comments below. Keep it civil. You know how YouTube gets. I expect you guys to be nice, but you don't have to be. All right? Thanks for watching. Till next time.